be able to share my screen. Let me ask a few questions here. Good morning, Melissa. Uh, let me see the polls. How about, can you hear me? Make sure if you'd check yes or no on that so I can. Okay, cool. You can hear me. And then, let's see. Can you see me? Because that's going to make a big difference in terms of you being able to see my screen. Okay, excellent. So now we are going to start. Today, we're going to... What, what are we doing here today? We're going to, everybody that's on this call has purchased the program, The Comfort Zone. And what we're going to do is um, do a little bit of training over the next 30 to 45 minutes. We're going to do a little bit of training on the program, uh, Look, identify some of the sticking points, landmines, pitfalls that many clients run into as a result of beginning to work with the program because we were really taking the focus off of pain, creating pain in the knee, and now we're going to be focusing on comfort. So there's a lot of dynamics that change in terms of understanding and approaching the body. So we want to do a little bit of training around that. Um, if that training is valuable to you, offer you a little bit more support if you so choose. And then at the end, I'll answer Q, uh, questions, do a live Q&A, which is if you have anything that you've been working with on the program, areas of the knee that you're like, okay, which stretches are going to help me the most with that, then I will we'll dig in and we'll um, outline the specific stretches in the program, the comfort zone that are going to help you the most get out of pain, help you with a strategy moving forward. So let's begin with the training. So what is the goal of the comfort zone? The goal of the comfort zone is beginning to help you experience getting relief in your knee, focusing just on the knee through comfort. So our focus is very... Um, our focus is focused. It's very directed towards the knee, in which most people with knee pain want to get their knee out of pain. And it, that's a good thing to do. Uh, and we run into a lot of common member challenges. Um, members begin working with the comfort zone. They don't feel anything. They don't understand what they're feeling. They get frustrated and confused because it's like, oh, well, the pain moved, the pain changed. Uh, what do I do next? And uh, they don't know who to reach out for help or how to reach out for help. And this goes with the program, the comfort zone, or working on your own, just going to physical therapy or whatever it is, because the whole focus is on pain. So it's, it gets a little bit confusing and overwhelming as to like, what do I do? How do I do it? When do I do it? I did this, this changed, but now I don't know what to do over here. And so it gets this big conglomeration of stuff that confuses the brain. And especially when you're in pain, you don't want to think about it. You just want to get out of pain. And I totally understand that. So I want to dig into some of these common questions, common member challenges that they get in order to um, demystify it a little bit and help in a way that gives you direction and guidance. When we have a clear understanding of what the next steps are, like what are the next pieces to work with in terms of getting you out of knee pain, it's clear, like the next few steps are easy and we want it to be easy because if it's easy, then you'll get out of pain faster. If it's hard and confusing and frustrating, that just means you're going to be stuck and you're going to be in pain longer. You can use the analogy of being in the forest and you don't have a compass and you don't have a map and you're stuck and you're frustrated and you're like, how do I get out of here? I'm lost. If there was someone there going, yeah, just walk in this direction and you'll hit a stream. And then when you hit that stream, you take it to the right 
and that's going to take you to the you know culvert pipe whatever i the point of it is when you have that direction and focus and guidance as to what are the next steps to take it takes all the frustration and confusion out of it so not feeling anything many times when members are not able to feel something it's because they're going too fast i see this continually um, especially when uh, people come straight off the internet they have knee pain they start my seven day challenge and they do, do they're doing that rotation stretch which is also in the comfort zone and they're like okay i rotate it out i rotate it in and i don't feel any difference and it's because there's you're going too fast speed kills when you go fast think of it um, if you're driving down a highway 65 miles per hour with the windows rolled up and the air conditioning on and the radio blaring, what you're going to see, smell, sense, hear, feel in the car doing 65 with all those other factors in it is going to be very different than if you're walking down that same road. What you're going to sense, what you're going to feel, what you're going to understand, what you're going to see is going to be completely different the slower you go. And that's where you get more out of the program is by going slower. And by going slower, you're going to see things, feel things, sense things, notice things that you wouldn't if you go very fast. And when I talk about slow, understand that in the videos as I'm demonstrating, I need to demonstrate it for the sake of the video. Otherwise, if I were to go as slow and as minute as you need to go in order to feel the change, you wouldn't notice anything on the video. We're only talking about a nerve, the width of an eyelash, that is causing pain in your knee. So as we rotate, just using the rotation for um, an example, if we rotate, we could rotate it gently. That'll be the second point that we're going to talk about here. But going very slowly and gently, we want to dial the knee in, essentially, to what comfort is. And as soon as we get it on that spot that's comfortable, then we want to stay there. That's the place. And, it, and it's going to feel a little weird. It's going to feel like you're not noticing anything. You're not feeling anything. It's going to feel a little awkward. And you're not feeling anything because it feels different. And you know why it feels different? Because it's not painful. That's what we're looking for. However, we've been so, I'll go as far as saying brainwashed. It's like, we got to look for the pain. We got, does it hurt over here? Does it hurt over here? And we don't want to do that. We want to go to the place where you don't feel anything. And when you don't feel anything, that's where the body relaxes. That's where the neurological signaling changes in the knee, in the brain, in the body. And your body begins to drop down and let go of the tension, of the pain, of the discomfort, of the stiffness. Very important. So speed kills. Slow down. Next is going more gentle. Being gentle. Being gentle with your knee. <laughs> you want to be gentle with your knee. It's been abused. It's been through a lot. It could be surgeries, could be accidents, injuries, traumas. Been through a lot of stuff. And think of it, how you would want to be addressed. Think of it like, uh, I, I think of it like my daughter. Okay, my daughter's five. And if I want her to do something, and I grab her and shake her and say, okay, come on, we need to do this. As opposed to me touching her cheek very gently. I even think of it more like when she was a baby, how that, that kind of like firmness yet gentleness in my hands when I would hold her. So there's the same type of firmness and gentleness you need to have with your knee that you don't want to be like shaking it going, why aren't you letting go of your attention? Why aren't you being comfortable? You see how that's not going to work? 
that if we try to force the knee to do something it doesn't want to do, it's not going to get it any closer to doing what you want it to do, which is become comfortable. So we need to go slower, more gentle, with like that firmness, yet gentle at the same time. So that's the second point here. Uh, when you don't feel anything, sometimes you're not going gentle enough. You're going being too rough with it, which kind of ties into the third point here. You're using too much strength. A lot of people, a lot of people with knee pain, myself included. What it, it's like. I'm a big guy. I'm a strong guy. So it's like, well, how much can I crank my knee this way and that way to feel comfort? And you see how that's not going to get you closer to feeling comfort? It's like we, we want to develop the sensitivity and awareness in the hands in a way that will illuminate where comfort exists in the knee in the one specific direction. So in the comfort zone, there are 11 different stretches. So we're working on developing the sensitivity and awareness in those 11 different directions of developing sensitivity and awareness in the hands. Because in one of those directions, the highest way to create comfort in the knee is going to happen in one of those directions. And, and the more we go gentle, go slow, and use the right amount of strength, and I was talking about in the last point, the firmness, like when I was holding my daughter, that place of being gentle and firm at the same time, not using too much strength, is going to get you so much further in terms of experiencing relief in your knee. Uh, the, the fourth one, and it um, is looking for pain. And what I'm talking about is, I mentioned this in the beginning of the call today, our focus to this point has been on pain. Push through the pain. No pain, no gain. Pain is weakness leaving the body. Just do it. But a knee in pain is not going to get out of pain the more you push through the pain. And in order to get out of pain, we have to look for something different. We have to look for what's not pain. And not pain is going to feel strange, awkward, foreign, very different than what we're used to. So we're looking for a place in the knee where the knee doesn't hurt. It's going to be quiet. It's going to be soft. It's going to feel like Oh, wow, it doesn't hurt. So many clients get stuck because they're looking, still looking for the pain. Like I just created comfort in my knee. Now I'm going to look for where it hurts. And we don't want to do that. We want to give the knee the experience of relief and allow it to experience the relief. Because the more we focus on comfort, the more comfort is going to expand in your knee and in the rest of your body. So all those things you want to do on the other side of knee pain, which I would encourage you to get clear on what that is. Because unless we have like an end goal of what you want on the other side of pain, you're going to be stuck in pain. It doesn't give the, the mind anything to work on. We need to give it to, I want to hike, I want to bike, I want to swim, I want to travel, I want to play tennis, I want to golf, I want to do the, the laundry list of things in your active lifestyle that you can't do now because you're in pain. So we need to focus on comfort and what's going to lead us in that direction to experience more comfort so you can live the life that you want to live. Which kind of ties in to point number five. Resuming normal activities too quickly. This is a little bit ties in back to number four. So the moment we feel comfort, the moment the knee gets relief, and I did this so many times in judo. It, like I had my surgery and I started beginning this process of experiencing comfort in my body. And the moment I would get out of pain, I'd go back to practice 
and I would do something that would put me right back into pain that I just got out of. And I was like, why doesn't this work? And the reason why is because when we introduce comfort to the knee, and the knee experiences relief. It just means the knee is comfortable. It doesn't mean the knee is healed. It doesn't mean the rest of the body has caught up with the fact that the knee has healed. So we need to give an integration period, time for your knee to go, oh, it doesn't hurt. Oh, that feels pretty good. Oh, I think I'll just walk today. I think I'll do something gentle for myself. I'll take care of myself. And in doing so, what ends up happening is the comfort expands. Because in that time when the body is comfortable, we're still going back to the program, the comfort zone, and creating more comfort in other parts of the knee that we're beginning to notice and become aware of because we're not muddying the waters by creating more pain. It's part of the process. We need to see how far the, the knee can go while still staying comfortable and then immediately getting it back into comfort as soon as we get out of that space of comfort and then going back to that end and then coming back. In the meanwhile, your level of activity increases, your experience of comfort in your body increases. So this is a process that we need to go through. We need to identify, we need to point out the blind spots and the landmines and the pitfalls that so many people get stuck in. So that kind of ties into the process where people don't feel anything or they don't see the results that they want. And these are common landmines and pitfalls. Many times clients don't understand the feeling. Um, don't understand what they're feeling. They look for the hurt so good feeling. Hurt so good, meaning like we get the knot between the shoulder blades and you just want somebody to stick a, stick a knuckle or stick an elbow in that place between the shoulder blades because it hurts so good. It feels like you're doing something. But when we understand the body on a deeper level and what is causing pain and there's nerve irritation and we do anything with that area of the body, other than take the pressure off of the nerves and create comfort, we're further irritating the pattern that's going on, causing the nerve irritation. So the hurt so good feeling, as much as it feels good, because we've been kind of taught for it to feel good, the body is still resisting on some level what is happening to it. And the way to get on the other side of it is to stop fighting what the body is doing and create comfort in that area to allow it to move through that pattern in the physical body. And when we do that, we get to the other side. We have a different experience of what's going on from the pain, awareness and understanding, and how we move forward in our lives. We, we talked about some of this looking for the pain. Of course, you want to look for something other than pain. Um, I want to talk about increased awareness. The really cool part about creating comfort in the knee and in the rest of the body, because we can't just isolate the knee. We have to look at the hips, the lower back, the hamstrings and the quads, the calves and the shins, the ankles and the feet. There's even some programs I'm working with. I'm working with some clients and some programs where they're, we're working with their neck because the body is an interconnected series of pulleys and levers. So the good thing about being more aware when we create comfort in the knee and we, we become more aware of exactly where the pain is experienced in the knee, we also become more aware of how this tension relates to the rest of the body. So, so the good thing about being more aware is you're more aware. That's a good thing. And the bad thing about being more aware is you're more aware. So I, I want to manage your expectations that as we be become more aware of the tension in the knee and relieve the tension in the knee, there's a huge potential of becoming more aware of how this is connected to other parts of your body. 
how the knee pain isn't going to go away or going go away the way you want with your hips and lower back holding the tension in the very same way. Or your hamstrings and quads holding tension the same way. Or maybe it was because of an ankle or a foot injury that happened within the past five to ten years that is causing what's going on in your knee. Or maybe it was a back surgery that your body is now walking differently that's causing the tension to go down in the knee. So we can't just isolate the knee and we become more aware of these tension patterns that are going on in other parts of the body. Um, yeah, and I talked about this. Pain, tension, discomfort, uh, irritation. The, it's the entire body. It's an, the body is an interconnected series of pulleys and levers that all play a role. Think of it like a bicycle wheel. If you take, you have the rim, you have the center, and you have the spokes going from the rim to the center. And when all those spokes are in the right balanced amount of tension, the wheel is true and straight, and it'll, it'll go very efficiently and effectively when it's mounted on a bicycle. But the moment you tighten up one of those spokes, it's going to start pulling, it's going to start pulling that bicycle wheel out of true. And when it pulls it out of true, what ends up happening is now the wheel wobbles. The tire's going to wear unevenly. You're not going to, it's not going to be able to support the full weight of the person on the bicycle. There's a whole host of other issues that happen as a result of that, the tension in the spokes changing. Your body's the very same way. When you experience knee pain, it causes the hips and lower back to compensate a hip to pull up and back or up and forward, making one of your legs shorter or longer. And that causes the shoe pattern to wear. That's just something you can look at the bottom of your shoes and look at the wear patterns are different based on what leg is doing more work. And where is it? In the heel, on the outside of the foot, on the inside of the foot, on the ball of the foot. Those are all indications that this pattern is affecting your entire body. We have to look at these. We have to consider the impact of how the knee is affecting the rest of the body and connected to the rest of the body. And I know it could seem like, oh, geez, Bill, how do I get a handle on this? And here's the cool part. It goes back to the basics. You create comfort. If you create comfort, the body heals. It knows what to do. We don't have to figure it out. You don't have to know how your nervous system works, that it fires at 286 miles per hour and can reorganize itself. It just needs comfort, the right conditions to do so, and the mindset from self-sabotage. Those are like the three steps. Create comfort, set up the conditions in the body so the body can heal itself, and keep the mindset in good place so there isn't self-sabotage that slows down this process. Okay. So um, the next thing we're going to talk about are uh, the, 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 the first point we talked about um, creating comfort. That's on the physical level. Uh, second is setting up the conditions. And this is really um, these first four here. What do we got here? Water, nutrition, breathing, supplementation. So that is really when I talk about setting up the conditions so the body can heal itself. When we're creating comfort in the knee and in the body, understand that the, we're rewiring the nervous system. The nervous system is an electrical system. And that electrical system, the, the signals for that electrical system to conduct throughout our body is sent through the medium of water. Water conducts electricity. So if we're creating comfort in the knee, it's sending a signal through the rest of the body to reorganize, to recalibrate. And if we don't have enough water, then that signal isn't able to be sent. And it's not only drinking enough water, is it's also, is the body able to absorb the water that you're drinking? 
which is sometimes like, yeah, Bill, I'm drinking lots of water. Well, if you run into the bathroom every five minutes as a result of increasing your water intake, you may not be absorbing the water that you drink. The next piece is nutrition. And what I'm talking about is inflammation specifically. A lot of times there's foods that we eat that create inflammation systemically, meaning throughout your entire body, that contribute to the inflammation that's going on in your knee. And just to be honest, your body doesn't need your joints to exist. It doesn't need your joints to live. So what will happen is all of the resources for your body to heal that inflammation goes to your, your gut and your brain to keep you alive. That's why joints ache so much. They get dehydrated, <laughs> they get inflamed, and the body doesn't have enough resources because the inflammation is too much to be able to heal what's going on in the joints. So we need to both reduce the foods that are contributing to inflammation as well as increase the foods that support the reduction of inflammation. So that's through nutrition. The third point is breathing. A lot of times we're in pain. When we get to that place of pain or that perceived place of pain, we hold our breath. What does breath holding do? It increases tension in the body. The reduction of space that happens in the joints are a result or contributed to by holding your breath. So there are specific breathing approaches or breathing techniques that can be incorporated to relax the tension in the physical body to increase the space and make movement much easier. So breathing is uh, one of the factors that we need to look at to, to create the condition to support the body's ability to heal. And then the fourth is supplementation. Supplementation is that there are certain supplements that can support the body's reduction of inflammation. Sometimes because of situations where the length of time that the, the body has been in pain, what's going on with the joint, the damage to the joint, the number of surgeries, we need to add supplementation to help the body rest better, to help the body relax more, and so it can move forward in healing, in getting to that end goal that you want in terms of um, feeling good, feeling, uh, feeling happy with how you move. So that is, we, we talked about the first one, which is physical, which is all the comfort zone. Then we have the, the second is setting up those factors, which is water, nutrition, breathing, and supplementation. And the third point is mindset. And the mindset piece is we got to avoid self-sabotage. We have to avoid doing those things that are going to set us back in the process. And what I'm saying is that um, if I, I talked about this a little bit earlier, and if we get the knee comfortable, it just means that the knee is comfortable. It doesn't mean the knee is healed. So we don't want to jump into physical activity too quickly. And that sets us up for self-sabotage, meaning, oh, the knee's comfortable. I'm going to go back and play, you know, 10 sets of tennis or run five miles or go hiking for 20 miles or whatever it is. And it sets us back in pain. And there isn't the realization of the leverage that we did have when we created comfort. So we want to avoid going back too early. And then we also want to recognize that we have to systematically test. We have to go back and approach physical activity almost from a reset, from going and um, getting the knee out of pain, developing your skill to get out of pain, creating those factors so the body is able to heal itself, and then systematically getting increasing your physical activity so as you move back into your the lifestyle that you want to live you have confidence that it isn't like guessing there isn't that little voice in your head going i wonder if this is going to work i hope it's going to work i hope i won't get into pain i hope i won't be in pain for 3 or 4 days later and that's where the mindset comes in that is the third point physical um 
looking at the factors that go into it, and then really the mindset, avoiding self-sabotage. Um, and when you, when you realize that, it's like there is a big piece of the puzzle. This is a big puzzle. It's a big game to understand what to do and how to do it. And knowing that I've given a lot of things to look at, and it can get overwhelming. I, it, it is a lot to think about and a lot to keep in focus. In and amidst being in pain and working out of pain and developing all these new neurological pathways, both in the knee and in the body, to know what to do. And I just want you to know that I'm here to offer more support. If that's something that feels congruent with where you're at. Uh, what's going on with your knee, how you would like to move forward. I just want you to know that that support is available. And I do offer, it's it's a program called Quit Your Quack. It's a, um, I'm going to send out the, let's see. Okay, I am... What do I want to send, send to all. Okay, I'm sending out a link to the program. Bill's great at getting people out of pain. Technology is a little questionable, but I, I do my best to get it all taken care of. So everyone should have gotten a link to the program. That is available whenever you want. There is, it's lifetime access to a Facebook group. Um, I believe, Carol, I just answered questions in that group a little bit ago, so I know you're in there as well. Uh, we do two live Facebook broadcasts per week. You get six-week access to the complimentary access to the virtual knee pain clinic, which is all the videos. So I have several hundred videos in the members area that cover the entire body, not just the knee. But we also get into um, the hydration, the water, the nutrition, the breathing, the supplementation, all of that is incorporated in, in that program. And I'm there two times a week in the Facebook group to answer questions, to guide you through the process until you're out of pain. Like I said, there's lifetime access there. You're always going to be in the Facebook group. You can always ask me questions and I will be there like clockwork. Um, and then in addition to that, there's also biweekly webinars that look just like this, that it's called Knee Club. Uh, that answer questions live, like that, which I'm about to unmute you just like I would in Neat Club to answer questions on what you have going on. So if you raise your hand, thank you for listening to me. Thank you for listening uh, to my little spiel about the Quit Your Quack program, the six-week program. Um, however, if you have questions, you would like to ask me a uh, about uh, the, the, the comfort zone. I'm happy to answer them. Please raise your hand. I will unmute you. And, um, or if you have questions about the Quit Your Quack program. And I will. Anyone? Any questions? Raise your hand. Let's see, Melissa typed in something. Yes, I've been thinking about stairs. I did so well. And then, I don't, again, can't avoid stairs, but I guess I need more patience, more time, and keep taking it slowly. Um, Melissa, it's not so much about, yes, patience. Yes, it will take time, but as soon as we zero in on exactly you know, is it stepping up the next step, you know, which knee hurts, then as you're stepping up, does it hurt or is it pushing off? Is it going upstairs or is it downstairs? We need more information in the room to zero in on exactly where the pattern is because this not only is in your knee, it ties in with your hips and lower back. So in order to support the process of letting go of this pattern in your knee when you're going up and down steps, we have to look at how this tension is affecting your hips and lower back that is affecting when you're going up and down the, 
the, the stairs. So we can look at the knee, create comfort in the knee, but if part of that pattern is affecting the hips and lower back, then the pain doesn't necessarily go away. So I'm going to read. You just responded. Melissa, I can unmute you and you can ask me this in person or I can read all these and it'll take a little bit longer. Okay, the pain is going downstairs, left knee. It's more in the front of the knee now that I have started the stretches. Good. It's like right on top, front of the kneecap, but it feels like a smaller area, sharper than it did before. Got it. So it's getting to more of a specific spot. So looking at where that smaller area is in, as it relates to the kneecap in the left knee and which of the comfort zone stretches. Oh, Carol, 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 Carol. She's, let, me, let me finish this, Carol, with uh, Melissa. So um, zeroing in on the specific stretch that will release the pain in that area of the knee. That's where to focus. So it could be the kneecap stretch. It could be the rotation. could be forward and back. Um, could be meniscus. It could be one of the knee points, one, two, three, or four. So based on where it's exactly, where you're exactly you're feeling it, will determine which stretch is going to give you the most relief in the shortest period of time. Because remember, this, this nerve is only the width of an eyelash. And when we get the pressure off of that nerve, the width of an eyelash, the relief is immediate. Okay, Carol, you are unmuted. Carol? Carol? I'm going to unmute you in the... You're on the phone. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on. Carol? Carol? Um, Hello? Carol? Hold on a second. I'm having audio mic problems. Okay. You have, I see you twice on my screen. Uh, so let me unmute the other one. Carol? Can you hear me? I think, hold on a second. Carol? <laughs> Unmute both. Okay, How, try now. Hi, can you hear me? I can, yes. So oh, wow. I have, I have two comp computers going, one with the sound and one with the picture. <laughs> Okay. So I didn't know I didn't know if you'd be able to hear me. So yeah, cool. um, this is great, great information. I really appreciate it um, and like it a lot. I just I guess my question is, um, I sent in like an update to you, and I know you answered it, but I don't see how to find the answer on Facebook. And my other question is, I, you know, this is more, this is more a webinar about the programs, correct? Like just to in introduce us to the program. Yeah, yeah, you're all in it, so I could answer your your Facebook question though. Oh, okay. I mean, I don't want to take up time if this isn't it's what we're devoting problem. to. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. Okay. So you go to the Facebook group. It'll come okay. up. Okay. And at the the very first video is um, an intro, welcome. Below that will be the video that I just answered your questions on about two hours ago. Oh, I missed that because I thought I should do this first. I can't, but I should, I could have tuned into that also, correct? You're fine. You're fine. Um, okay. So... When I answer your question in the Facebook group, like you asked, you posted a question, which was a great question. So I answered it. And what I mm -hmm. is I re I put below it. It said replied September 20th, Thursday, September 20th, 2018. So you know which video to go to for the answer to the questions. I see. Yeah. 
So, I figured I figured it was during that that meeting that I missed. So um, okay, that's great. So, so it's it's you did you're doing great. You're doing fine. You ask great questions. I'm so glad you put the information in there. Uh, well, well, what happened? Uh, you now you'll know which video to look for. So it'll have the, yeah at the top of the video. You just scroll down and go. Oh, there was September twentieth. That's the one Bill answered my question. In. Great. Um. And while I have you, and I'm, uh, just one more question. I, I guess I needed some more information on how to get through this weekend. Uh, it, oh, the tennis. Yeah. Should, it, it, how do I contact you for that? Do I do it via Facebook or? Do the Facebook group. Um, work with modules 9, 10, and 11 in the pain pattern interrupt section. Okay. You're standing between sets. Oh, okay. Got it. That should help with that. In addition to what I gave you uh, in the um, answer to today's video. Okay. Gotcha. 9, 10, 11. 9, 10, 11, right. pain pattern interrupt section. And then um, you, you're already into the, the homeopathics, the, the magnesium. Yeah. 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 Do that between as well as before before and after when you put okay the topical stuff the topical stuff yes and then yeah. let me know monday how it goes like where what happened and then we'll mm -hmm. do we'll um ramp up so by the next time you have to play it'll be a piece of cake nice and for anyone listening so far so great wonderful this is great. Just Carol, just give them a, a like a time frame because everyone it's like, oh, this guru guy, knee pain <laughs> on the internet. So if you you, you found me, where was that? YouTube, wasn't on it? On Saturday. Saturday. So we are So five days it's Thursday. Five days ago. Yeah. So it, it wasn't that long ago. And um we Carol and I had a conversation the other day. We got her in the Quit Your Quack program, and this is – honestly, this is how I work in that program. It's it's the same type of support, and we're just pointing out, well, what needs to happen with what's going on, what's presented in your life. Yeah, I'm loving it. Cool. It's great. Highly recommended, everyone. Okay. Carol, do you have any other questions? Anything? No, that's it. Thank I, you. I'm going to move, move mute both of your lines now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, Melissa, let's see. Okay, I do the rotation, pull apart with the straight leg. Okay. Uh yeah, the the thing that I would add to it's like we're on top. I would do the kneecap stretch as well. Add that to the equation. Okay. Let's see. That those are all the questions. This replay will be available. Uh, you'll get a notification from the system after this is done to watch the replay of this video if you so choose. This will also be sent out to all the people that registered, however, weren't able to make it for which whatever reason. So uh, once again, I'd encourage you invite you to sign up for the Quit Your Quack program. We'll provide additional support. Looks a lot like what we talked about today. Just we'll customize it to what you have going on, like with what Carol had presented. And then we work a couple times a week. And I point you to other videos that incorporate the entire body. So I, oh, we talked about lift patella instead of compression, but I can't do it. Can't figure out how to grasp patella. And it is so unnerving to feel how strange it all feels in there. Yeah. You got to do it gentle, subtle, slow. <laughs> Watch the video over again. And everything that I would tell you to do with the kneecap, all we're doing is getting the pressure off of the nerve, the width of an eyelash that's being squeezed. And once we create that little bit of traction, which is the pattern that is the key to you experiencing relief in the knee, then the relief happens. The body relaxes and unwinds and lets go. So, um, 
let's see. Hey. <laughs> Okay, Melissa. Oh, and with that February event, you would get the Quit Your Quack. That like that's all packaged in there, just so you know. You get the live event, you get the Quit Your Quack, and you get Neat Club. It's all packaged together, so it's included with that. So if that's something you would be interested in, then uh, we can do that. Okay, Bill Paravano, the knee pain guru, going to sign off for today. I could make knee pain, put the put the fun back in knee dysfunction. Okay, Bill Paravano, the knee pain guru, going to sign off for today. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful rest of the week. Thank you so much for being here.